folks, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> this is Joel, and in a series of videos, we'll discuss about campus fabric, right? Now, um, <clears throat> uh, campus fabric, right? There's a very nice uh, configuration guide out there, right? Uh, which is put by Cisco, I think, for the release uh, 16.6.6, .6, right? Uh, so, uh, this is a very detailed, uh, uh, you know, configuration guide out there, which explains uh, how uh, how anyone can go and deploy the campus fabric in their own network, right? Um, and this again talks completely uh, <clears throat> with um, without a, without having a DNAC in place, right? This is literally this guide completely talks about how you can deploy the campus fabric manually, right? When I say manually, how do you configure all those uh, components of your uh, you know campus fabric, which is your edge device? You've got your border node, you've got your controller control node and uh, you've got your fusion device, right? Uh, how do you make sure that the DHCP works in fabric and all of those cool things, right? So this is a very interesting guide. So what I did was I just um, <clears throat> built a quick topology, right? And um, um, what I'll be doing is in this series of videos, we will actually check out uh, uh, or actually we'll be, we'll be configuring this whole config guide, right? In my topology, right? Uh, <clears throat> now this is really going to be beneficial for folks who are pursuing their, you know, uh, uh, CCI, right? Because SD access is probably a very important topic there, and uh, uh, not many have access to uh, DNAC or CAT 9K boxes, right, in their houses. So uh, this this particular setup would really help you guys to kind of uh, uh, you know understand the inner inner workings of how the protocols work, right? How the Lisp works, how the whole overlay and underlay works, how the policy plane works. And, um, you know, how, how does this whole network, you know, kind of connect to the outside and so on. So all those cool things, right, you, you can learn, you know, at your fingertips without, um, you know, ha without having a fancy controller uh, at your home, right. You can spin up this topology and uh, uh, you don't have to, again, use Eve. You can, it's nothing but pretty simple. I've just used uh, CSR 1000 Vs, right, over here on the top. So all these devices are CSR 1000 Vs. And rest of all the devices are all your IOL devices, right? Your um, IOL switches and routers. So anyone can, you know, virtualize this either on any of the platforms. It could be viral, it could be GNS3 or Eve, whichever platforms you want, right? So that being said, uh, let's uh, uh, let's just uh, look at what we have, right? So what's our plan here, right? So <clears throat> this is going to be our plan, right? We are going to do a bunch of tasks to to explore this campus fabric in detail. Right, so these are the tasks which we'll be doing. We'll be configuring the underlay, we'll configure the overlay, then we'll do a bit of policy plane stuff, then we'll do, uh, we'll see how the fusion router works, right? How it connects your, 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 your inner network, your campus fabric, how does it connect to the outside world, right? Uh, we'll talk about that as well in a series of videos and we'll do all of those configurations right here, right? And like I said, again, at any point of time, you want more explanations, just go down to the, you know, config guide over here. This really has everything. Um, and I'm basically referring this for, you know, doing any of my configurations, right? Uh, and there are a lot of gotchas, which I will keep on telling you guys as we go about doing this. Sweet. Um, now, um, <clears throat> let's go back here and let's spend a couple of minutes. Like you see, this is going to be our agenda. And for this video, it's going to be, we'll talk about the topology a bit and we'll then go and configure the most basic part, which is going to be our underlay, right? Cool. So, uh, how, what is the topology all about? So, you to you see the topology, it's very clear, right? Or at least, uh, it's kind of intuitive. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory, I would say, because what do we have here on the bottom? You have your clients, right? We've got different type of clients. You can see there are two colors here which I've used, the red and the green. So these two correspond to two different, uh, let's call them virtual networks, right? So think of this whole um, um, this whole example as a as some kind of a company, which is, uh, you know, let's, I don't know, maybe let's call it as um, company X, right? So it's a, it's a customer or it's a company X. And let's think of this company as a sales company, right? So they just have two functions in their network, which is uh, sales, which is represented by the green color over here. And the other function in their, uh, in their organization is the IT, right? So they really have just two pieces, the IT folks and the sales folks, right? And we are basically provisioning this campus fabric for such a customer, right? Pretty simple. 
So um, these are basically those clients, you know, I have a couple of you know, desktops, right? Uh, I have I have shown an IP phone here. Uh, there is some kind of a small server, which probably someone is running, right? Uh, and then there is an example of, I wanted to show you how the mobility works in campus, right? So I have a roaming uh, host as well, which I will show you with some examples later. Um, <clears throat> the other interesting thing is, um, uh, I've also kind of, again, all of these are not IOL devices, right? They're just different, uh, uh, you know, uh, the symbols are different, but they are really nothing but normal IOL routers simulating clients, right? They are just the uh, regular routers, you know, which I'm simulating clients here, right? But I wanted to still show you the various functionalities and it would make, will become more, um, you know, uh, um, you will understand it more as we go about configuring it, right? So like I said, you've got the clients here and here you see you have the access points, right? Because you know, in a, in a building, you're sure going to have access points, right, for wireless network. So uh, this is what I'm simulating as access points. Think of these three guys as like three floors, right? One, two, three. So you have three different floors. And uh, now the funny thing here is, uh, you might be surprised as to why I have put yellow boxes here, right? It um, <clears throat> It's basically because, um, you know, to, to simulate uh, uh, edge device, a fabric edge. So these are the fabric edge devices, right? Whatever this yellow boxes, they are the fabric edge devices. Now it's kind of difficult to simulate a, a, a fabric edge device, you know, in any kind of environment because uh, we really don't have a node which completely behaves as iOS XE, you know, fabric device. Because in a traditional uh, network, what would be your edge device? Generally, it is going to be your CAT uh, 9300 or 9400, right? And these boxes generally run iOS XE, right? And, uh, you know, the XE releases like 16.x, 17.x. So it's very difficult to simulate this functionality because this is nothing but a layer 3 switch, right? It has L2 and L3 functionality, right? So it's L2 plus L3 uh, functionality, right? It's kind of very difficult to simulate. So in my example, uh, what I've done is, I have uh, used a combination of two nodes, which is one is your CSR 1000V. So you get the feel of the whole iOS XE part and the stuff which I can't, uh, I mean, uh, basically it's a L3 router, right? CSR 1000V. So for all the L2 functionalities, I'm using one IOL switch here, right? So a combination of this will give you the feel of this iOS XE uh, device, right? Like I said at the starting, you know, this is not a complete, uh, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one kind of a mapping with your existing, you know, SD access solution as such. Uh, but like I said, the main intention of this is for education, right? For people to get uh, acquainted, to experiment, to learn the technology. So that's why, you know, we are just going a bit roundabout way to, uh, to, to make the best of what we have, right? So <clears throat> that being said, let me just get rid of this, creating a lot of clutter, I believe. So let's get rid of that, right? So we talked about fabric edges. So uh, just to recap, I have um, um, combined my CSR 1000V. So this is nothing but a CSR 1000V, right? CSR 1000V. So it's nothing but a CSR 1000V and this is nothing but uh, IOL uh, switch, right? Let me, I think that did not write properly. Yeah, so that's an IOL switch. Right, so we have a CSR 1000V and IOL switch. Both of them um, are, are combined to emulate uh, the capabilities of a fabric edge device, right? So that's good. So uh, apart from that, what do we have? What other cool stuff do we have here? So on the top, you see there is a border device, right? And this is going to be useful as well. So we have a, uh, <coughs> just get rid of that. Yeah, so we've, we've got a border device here. Right, and we'll, uh, 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 sorry, it's not just a border, it's going to be border plus control, right? So this single device is going to act as a border device as well as a control node because the control node is very important for Lisp, right? So it's going to act that way. And then the top, right, we also have the fusion device, right? Um, and on the left hand side, this is like a very simple data center which I've simulated because again, I want to make this as, um, you know, close to a campus network, right? This is obviously not a big data center. It's just I put a switch and I put into servers here. But, uh, you know, you can think of, you know, this as your data center. And, you know, if you have resources and time, probably you can spin up a big data center. You can change this topology, add more big devices, make it into, I don't know, maybe like a BGP, uh, uh, you know, EVPN, VXLAN, EVPN kind of a data center as well, right? So that's up to you. But I just wanted to kind of simulate a small data center here. And I wanted to show how my 
uh, campus fabric connects to the data center, right? So uh, that's one piece of it. And on the other side, we have uh, my NAT device, which is connecting me to the internet, right? Which is connecting the whole, uh, you know, fabric, the whole campus fabric, it is connecting to the internet, right? So that's the whole uh, quick audio. I'm pretty sure, you know, probably you wouldn't, you wouldn't have understood much uh, without, you know, without, uh, you know, double clicking each of this, which we will do throughout this series. But that's a quick um, overview of what we have, right? So that being said, uh, let's get uh, right to it, right? What we'll do first is, like I said, we'll go about doing this, right? We'll do uh, underlay today or in this video, we'll basically configure the underlay, right? So where does this underlay go? So let me use a different color probably, uh, or maybe here, this should be fine. So what are we going to do is, we are going to configure the underlay over here. Right, so this these four devices, right? You've got the border border device, and you've got you know the three of these uh, CSR one thousand Vs, right? So we are gonna configure the underlay, and underlay, you know, in a campus fabric is generally our ST, ST access uses ISS, right? You really don't always have to use ISS. You can use EHRP, OSPF, and whatnot. But uh, you know, I'm just trying to stick to the solution which um, SD access uses, right? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, just to keep you know as close to the SD access solution uh, and that's what we are going to be doing now. So I hope that's clear. So we are going to start with that and that's going to be this video. We'll configure the ISS and we'll verify if it is working and uh, we should uh, uh, then move on to the next task. Cool. So let's come back here. So we've got your, I've got my devices. So you've got your border node here, right? So let me just clear the screen a bit, right? Let's start with some basic configurations. The host name is important, right? So let's grab that. So that's going to be my host name, right? <clears throat> site one, why do I call it as site one? Because you know, in future, if I have time, I can pro probably create one more site here on the right side and I can show you how, how multi-site SDA works, right? By connecting this site to another site, right? So that is something which we can explore in future as well. So I'm gonna call my devices with the tag called site one for now, cool? All right, so the next thing is, uh, let's go and put in some uh, loopbacks on all the three devices, right? On all the, on all the, uh, on all the devices, we are gonna put in some loopbacks. So there you go, we are gonna put in a loopback zero, and uh, we'll put in uh, <clears throat> uh, the IP address of 10.001.255, uh, it's gonna be a slash 32 uh, 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 device, right? Uh, sorry, slash 32 IP address. Uh, and we'll enable ISIS. Actually, you know what? Let's put in the ISIS router ISIS part first, and then we can uh, probably uh, configure the interfaces, right? So let's do that first. So there you go, router ISIS, and we've got the net ID, right? The net ID is important. Um, we are gonna say the area zero, right? That's the area, and the rest of the stuff is your system ID, and this is the uh, the the ending octet is always zero zero, right? Because as as, as IPv4 it is zero zero. Cool. So um, uh, the system ID is good. So we are good with uh, my uh, router ISS configuration. Right? We are using metric stylus wide. Uh, that being said, let's go back and uh, do the configuration, redo the configuration of uh, probably the loopback, right? There you go. The loopback uh, IP address is enabled. We've got the let's put in a no shut probably, right? So we have enabled ISIS on the loopback. What else do we have? So if you look at the diagram here, this is the, uh, we are doing it on the border and control node here, right? So uh, we will actually, let me just, uh, I think this might be a bit confusing. Let me change the host name to reflect the right thing. So it's actually nothing but uh, it's border plus control, right? So let's change it to border control node one side one. Okay, uh, legal, what is that? Not a legal name, interesting. Maybe it's big. Okay, that's weird. Let's try to see some character. Nope. Okay, so that's, I don't know, maybe call it as border CP. Yeah, that looks good. So that's good. So we're gonna say border CP site one. I think it's understood, you can understand this, right? It's border control um, uh, control node, control plane, control node, whatever, right? Uh, anyway, so so that's your, um, 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 that's your border node. We have 
configured the loop pack. We have enabled ISS. Let's quickly do the rest of the interfaces. So we've got gigabit one, two, and three, right? So let's go and uh, configure IP address on these guys and enable ISS, right? There you go. So this is gigabit one. The IP address is uh, gonna be, uh, we're gonna use uh, slash 30, right? Uh, is it slash 30? Yeah, slash 30. We're gonna use slash 30 everywhere because these are all point to point links, right? So uh, uh, the gigabit one, what is gigabit one? Gigabit one is the one which is uh, uh, connecting down to my edge node one, right? So it's gonna be 10.1.1.2, right? There you go, that's good. And uh, the rest of the stuff, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe let's put the stuff like uh, negotiation, right? We can make it auto uh, and ISIS uh, network, we can make this point to point, right? Why do we make it point to point? It's the same uh, to prevent all, to, so that we don't waste time electing your designated uh, IAS and all of that, right? Very similar to your OSPF concepts. Cool. So that's your gigabit one. Similarly, let's quickly do gigabit ethernet two as well. Right, the IP address is gonna be 10.1.16 here, right? Uh, that particular network. And the last one is your, uh, the interface which is connecting to the third fabric edge which is 10.1.1.10 right pretty straightforward it's all slash uh, 30 networks right and all of them are point to point right i've enabled point to point so that we don't waste time and you know the devices don't have to wait for the election to happen and all of that right <clears throat> cool so that should be it uh, let me just uh, save that so while we move on to and work on the next device which is your um, you know edge one Right, so let's do that. Let's quickly clear that. So on your edge one, let me just um, put in the host name first. There you go. That's your edge one and site one. And let's put in the ISS just like we did earlier. We are gonna do this quickly now because now that we know how to do it, right? The only difference here is gonna be, you see the, the ending, right? The system ID changes. The rest, everything remains the same, right? Very basic ISS stuff. Um, you've got the 0011 over here because that's the system ID. So we're gonna paste that. And uh, we also need to enable, what are the two interfaces? One will be the loopback obviously, which is 10011. And uh, the other interface is the gigabit one interface, right? Which uh, we need to configure. So let's do that. There you go. So this is loopback enabling ISS here, gigabit one, putting in the IP address and enabling ISS, as simple as that. <clears throat> so that's happening it's a bit slow while okay so while that is happening let's quickly probably go down to the rest of the devices and quickly dump in the configs because now we know the drill it's pretty much same right so we'll put in the host name let's uh, put in the router ISIS part here right the only difference here is the system ID which we have changed right and uh, we are going to enable the loopback and the point to point interface right again uh, just keep in mind whatever i'm doing here it's i'm trying to replicate as much as closer to the whole campus fabric and sd access solution but it might not be exactly the same obviously because you know we do have some restrictions here because we are using csr 1000 v's which are typically l3 devices so most of the l2 features will not work some of them can be emulated using this, um, you know, IOL switches here, but not everything, right? So we are going to make it as close as possible, but not exactly the same. <clears throat> All right, so uh, that's done. And probably the last switch, which is remaining is your third edge. So let's quickly do that one as well. Why do I have three switches? Because I wanted to show the whole, uh, uh, the whole roaming part, right? So that's why I wanted to put in third switch as well. Otherwise we could have done the whole thing with just two switches, right? So let's do this router ISS, right? The only difference, like I said, it's gonna be here, the system ID, right? Changed it to 13. And let's go to loopback zero and the two of the interfaces. Yeah, there you go. So that's happening. Meanwhile, let's go and check if everything is good here. Um, let's see, wait, so this is good. This is happening. H2 is good, I think. And uh, this is happening as well, which is good. All right, so I can quickly, um, <clears throat> where are we right now? Okay, okay, so 
um, the interfaces have come up right so probably let's quickly check the ISIS neighbors show ISIS neighbors okay not yet do we have uh, all the interfaces up uh, the looks like one of the interface is down so let's do a no shut right so which is uh, interface gig 3 I guess are we using gig 3 yeah we are so let's do a no shut there should come up any time now what is happening here Ah, everything is down. That's bad. Okay. I think I should have done a no shot. So let's do that quickly. Big one, no shot. And uh, that should be, that should help the ISS to come up here as well. Uh, let's do a no shot right on this guy. What, a, what is happening here? So here as well, probably we'll have to do it. So gig one and no shot okay cool so now let's wait for the neighborship yeah see i can see the neighborships coming up the adjacency is coming up so show isis neighbors i should ideally have three neighbors okay right now there are only two third one is yet to come up also notice that uh, yeah yeah the third one has come up now also notice that i have retained the l1 l2 kind of a adjacency right uh, or the my each of my links are l1 l2 right but if you want to optimize it more, you can probably make them just L2, right? But anyway, ISIS optimization is not kind of like the core, uh, you know, topic which we are discussing. So that's why I'm just going with the very simplest configuration here for ISIS. Uh, that being said, looks like all my three guys are up. So I'll do show IP route and I should have, uh, you can see my uh, loopbacks, right? The slash 32 networks are all available, right? A border is able to reach my, um, this is gonna be my edge one, this is my edge two, this is my edge three. So it's able to reach all the three guys. We can check by doing a ping as well. There you go, so all of that is good, right? So looks like we are done with the underlay configuration, right? So probably I can just uh, save this. Yeah, so let me just, all right, so that gets saved, um, and so we are done with the right, memory. Yeah, so let's go back here. So we are done with the first task, which is very simple. Like I said, I wanted to keep everything very simple here in my first uh, video. In the next one, we'll talk about overlay in detail, right? We'll talk about how to configure the whole Lisp part, how the macro segmentation works. Uh, once we are done with that, we'll also talk about um, how the whole uh, what are VNs and how do you make the VNs to talk to each other, how the client mobility works and all of that, right? Very cool part coming up in the next video. Uh, before we sign off, I'll just um, uh, tell you the images which I'm using here. Like for example, let me quickly do a show version here, right? So I'm, I think I'm using 17.3.1a, yeah, right? And that's nothing but uh, available here on the official Cisco um <clears throat> site right you get it here probably let me just log in give me a second yeah so there you go 17 dot you can go down to amsterdam i guess 17 dot uh, where is it oh, here right uh, i'm using 17 dot 3 dot 1a i'm using this one but i think there, there's a new release which has come out 17 dot 3 dot 2 so go ahead and use this if you want it should still work right or you can if you have something like 16 dot x even these should work as well right so no issues over that uh, apart from that yeah so my <clears throat> my switches are nothing but iol switches or you can also use virtual ios right which comes with viral so that should uh, do the trick as well right so um, i'll end the video here and we'll come back and we'll talk about the overlay and how do we configure that and um, how does you know how does sd access work uh, how does overlay in sd access work and stuff right so we'll do that cool stuff in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Have a good one. Bye.